Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. In the Crown and Bridge clinical situation, a temporary bridge will be fabricated from a diagnostic wax up. An alginate impression is taken to register the details of the diagnostic wax up, and this is poured up in velmic stone. This replica then is blocked out in the area of the potic with a block out wax. This is placed on the Omnivac machine and a piece of plastic wafer is placed in the upper portion of the machine and locked firmly in place. Heater is turned on and this is left for about five minutes. When the plastic extends about an inch and a half, then the heating unit is turned to the side and the plastic wafer is pulled down over the model and the vacuum turned on. The plastic wafer material then is removed from the replica and trimmed. This is the point at which you will start the project these plastic wafers preformed will be available to you in the sophomore clinic. These are trimmed carefully back to the crown form. They're tried on the model and any excess plastic is retrimmed. A window is trimmed in the bicuspid and you'll note there's a millimeter to a two millimeter extension of the plastic material. You'll note also that there has been a slight extension on the first bicuspid to act as a stop. The plastic wafer is then removed and the plastic teeth that are a patient's replica are lubricated. This is very important because the Duralay, when it polymerizes, can combine with the plastic of the plastic teeth. So this is very carefully lubricated with Duralay lubricant down the grooves, over the entire ridge, and the anterior teeth, wherever areas that the plastic might flash. Pink base plate wax has been used to seal the cervical around these teeth so that the liquid plastic does not run down this root area. The distal of the first by has also been blocked out. A thin mix of Duralay is made and all the bubbles are released and this is very carefully flowed into the occlusal details. The advantage of using a thin mix is that it flows into the occlusal details rather readily. It's important to wait until the entire gloss is lost from the Duralay. If this is placed on too soon it'll stick to the plastic. This is placed over the model, but we've noticed at this time that there's a small bubble. If you see a bubble, as you see here, then you use your plastic instrument to fill the bubble in with the Duralay. This is then placed over the lubricated model, seated down to its proper position, and then you have the patient close on this to drive this down to the proper level squeeze on the buckle and lingle of the pony because this tends to extend outward. And then with the plastic instrument, we can carefully tease away any flash and adapt margins, like on the mesial of the first bicuspid. The bridge is very carefully teased on and off while the plastic is setting or polymerizing. Seated and have the patient close again. When the acrylic reaches a rubbery consistency, then the bridge should be 
removed and the plastic patient teeth should be relubricated with Durlay lubricant so that the acrylic will not adhere to the plastic model. The patient then closes and this is allowed to polymerize. When the acrylic is hardened, then the shell of the Omnivac plastic is removed and the bridge is inspected to see if there are no bubbles and all the details are evident in the temporary plastic bridge. A heatless stone is used to trim away the rough flash and to contour the ponic. The ponic should be formed into a sanitary ponic just as the permanent fixed bridge will have. The sanitary ponic should follow the contour of the ridge and have a millimeter of space under it. The Joe Dandy disc then is placed in the straight hand piece and this is used to contour the interdental space or embrasure area of the potic. This connector is formed so that there will be room for the soft tissue. Then a rubber wheel is used to rough polish the bridge. Should you expose some bubbles in polishing, these can be repaired by taking small amounts of Duralay on a brush and filling the voids with this self-curing acrylic. Then this can be repolished. The bridge is polished with pumice and a rag wheel. You'll notice that we protect the margins with our finger so that these margins are not polished away. A high luster is important so that this temporary bridge can be readily cleansed. After polishing, the pumice is removed and the bridge inspected. The plastic teeth are lubricated with Vaseline. In this clinical lab situation, in order that the temporary cement will not adhere to the plastic teeth. This is not done in the clinical situation. A zinc oxide eugenol temporary cement then is mixed and placed in the crowns. And when a thin layer has been placed in the crowns, this is then placed on the model. The patient then closes their mouth and drives the bridge to the proper position, which will be slightly higher than when the bridge was made because the on the back template has been removed. This distance now will be taken up by the temporary cement. The excess temporary cement has been removed. This is very important that it is removed from the crevice because this will act as an irritant to the soft tissue. The contours are checked. Next, the occlusion is checked. And if any adjustments are to be made, they are made at this time. If everything is correct, then this bridge will hold the abutment teeth comfortably until the next appointment. In fabricating removable dies, saw cuts are made on the mesial and distal of the abutment tooth. Care must be taken not to cut the abutment. The saw cut is made completely through the velmic stone to the yellow base. Care must be taken also to avoid cutting the teeth on the opposite side of the arch. If the saw blade is approaching this area, a wooden tongue blade or another device can be laid over the occlusal surface to protect it. The cut is continued through the pink velmix. Then the blade is very carefully removed and the distal cut is made. Care must be taken to protect the abutment. 
The thumb is used to keep the saw blade away from the margin, and the, the thumb is used as a guide to make the initial cut. Care must be taken to preserve the ridge, because if the cut is made too far to the center of the ridge, then there will not be sufficient guide for the fabrication of the ponic. A similar cut is made on the mesial and distal of the molar die. The valmix junction is etched and then the dowel is tapped. The die should release at this time. If it does not, then perhaps a saw cut is not deep enough. The die is inspected and you will note the V notch that we've placed and the positive area in the yellow stone. The die is then trimmed with a heatless stone. It's very important to trim the excess away to allow room for waxing. You'll note here the trim dies with the margins exposed. These dies then are tried back on the model. Care must be taken not to get dust down the dowel pin holes. If care has been taken, the die should seat completely and the V-notches evident. In articulating the mandibular model, the Dorley copings are placed on the removable dies. They should be stable and not rock or rotate. The mandibular model is placed on the maxillary model and this also should be stable and should not rock. Pieces of tongue blade then are attached to the mandibular and maxillary model to hold it in place during the articulation procedure. Sticky wax is used to hold these pieces of tongue blade firmly in place. Four of these will be attached. This is one way of attaching the maxillary and mandibular model. The tongue blades have been attached and now we will place plaster on the models and secure them firmly to the articulator. Before this is done, the ends of the dowel pins must be covered with utility wax. Should plaster get in these areas, it would make the removal of these dowel pins very difficult. This wax allows an access to the end of the dowel pin. The ring is lubricated with Vaseline and shims are placed in the TMJ. The articulator is also closed to see if there is clearance and that the model does not bind. Should this bind, it should be trimmed in this area. The base of the model is moistened with the paper towel and the paper towel is left in place to keep that model moist. And then impression plaster is mixed. The impression plaster is then applied to the model. You note that the mixture of plaster is on the thin side. This will allow us sufficient working time. The plaster is teased over the surface of the model and then formed into a slight mound. Then a small amount is placed on the ring and a slight mound of impression plaster is placed in this area. Following this then, the articulator is closed. If the plaster is too thick, this will limit the closing of the articulator. Articulator is closed until it hits the pin, and then further plaster can be added under the model.
The model has been trimmed with a laboratory knife and the plaster is set. The utility wax is then removed and the access to the end of the dowel pins is exposed. The accuracy of the mount is now checked with shim stock. We should be able to get contacts on our copings. The dies then are ready for fabrication of the bridge. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.